Now, if you're anything like me, you're lazy. I think all programmers and engineers are. We're just inherently lazy people that are willing to spend a disproportionate amount of time to make things easier. And some guy I don't like once said, I will always choose a lazy person to do a difficult job because a lazy person will find an easy way to do it. Sun Tzu. <laughs> Jokes. Not Sun Tzu. And what better exemplifies this than coding scripts to automate boring, repetitive tasks that make you want to punch your monitor every single time you do them. <sighs> Sorry, got carried away. However, there are tasks that I do every week that I just can't be bothered to code myself. So I've partnered with make.com on this video to help me with that. And if you want to try out make.com for free for 30 days, click the link in the description. If not, and you just want to code these workflows yourself, well, not only are they incredibly useful and just huge time savers, but they also make for very good resume projects. Because like I said in my last video, and always make sure in a resume or portfolio, you use big numbers to show how important you are because we all know bigger person, better number which you can do with the time these automation workflows save you. Or maybe you're just annoyed that every single time you submit a pull request, it takes days for an individual to review the code because they don't see the message. Or you take that long to review the code because you don't, you don't check GitHub notifications. You don't check your email all the time. Oh, come on. All you do is check Discord or your project management software to see what tasks you have going on. Well, this solves that. This is the GitHub PR alert workflow. And what it does is that it searches for pull requests on GitHub every 15 minutes. And when it sees one, like this one right here, change readme, it'll go through the router and send you a Discord message with the pull request URL. And it'll also create a card or an issue or whatever in your project management software. And I do specify that because instead of GitHub, you could use GitLab or instead of Discord, you could use Slack, or instead of Trello, you could use Jira. All of these are already in here, so you're good to go. I know that sounds a little sales pitchy, but I, I'm just impressed with the software and all of the integrations in there. Sorry if I come off that way, I don't mean to. So now what I'm gonna do is run this. So as you can see, there are no cards right here. There's no message in this channel, and it's gonna take a second and populate with both of those things. This is a little bit in the way, apologies, but you can see that right there. So now we can come over here and we have a card and then you can see in discord that you have a new pull request to review and then you click on that and it takes you to the PR URL for you to review the code. It's wonderful. And you want to know how I made this? I created a new scenario, used the AI assistant, create or edit a scenario. And then I just typed in GitHub pull request sends discord message and creates Trello card. That way I don't have to go through each individual one and search, which I'll show you in just a second. And it just creates everything for me. But let's say I wanted to replace something like send a message by webhook bot. Let's say I just wanted to send a message instead. So I could delete this module, drag and drop this here. And let's do that for dramatic effect and auto align. Eh, pretty nice. And the only difference here is that it sends the discord message before creating the Trello card, as opposed to doing them both at the same time. Oh, what would actually be smart is if I unlinked this connection right here and actually threw the Trello card in between auto align, what I could also do. So if this is my original one, it, it includes the URL of the pull request. I could also include the URL of the Trello card or the Jira issue or what have you. Yeah, this is probably a better way to do it, but uh, <laughs> let's just stick with this for now. And how I set this up is obviously I connected to my GitHub, I connected to my Discord, I connected to my Trello, and then I went to the repository PR automation test. And whenever a pull request is open, that's what I'm looking for. And then for the Discord, I created the message down here using the URL like you just saw and sending that message to this particular channel and then created the card in the specific board and list that I wanted it, customizing the labels and things of that nature. But that's how it works for me. Beautifully done. But what you can also do is add one more thing to it, which I think would be a pretty cool addition. So you can add OpenAI's chat GPT, and then we can create a completion for a prompt or chat. We can add that right in between here. As you can see, we can auto realign like that. I'm going to pull it back over. We can come through here, create the connection and set it up. 
so that it can review the code from the pull request. And then we can have it add comments to be included in the Discord message or in the details for the Trello card. As you can see, we added the description already, which is the description from the commit. And that way, if you have a junior developer who isn't really confident reviewing a senior's code, you can have ChatGPT help them out a little bit, maybe get them started, maybe identify some code to potentially refactor, and then it doesn't do the actual work for you. And when I say that, um, ChatGPT doesn't, because it ain't there just yet, but it can give you comments and kind of help identify problems that then you go ahead and solve. I don't know. I think that's a pretty cool use case. Y'all try out the ChatGPT OpenAI one and let me know how it works. For now, I'll just keep, you know, being notified in applications that I actually use. This should actually be Notion if I wanted to actually use it. I just wanted to use Trello because it's, I don't know, more popular for project management. But with Discord, one that I actually use and I actually get <laughs> uh, no, uh, notifications for. Now, another workflow, or as they call scenario, I'm going to discard changes because, again, I like my workflow as it sits. Well, it is this interview workflow, which is actually a really good use case for, like, companies or, or people who are hiring other developers on your team. And it, we'll get to that in a second. But it's built on top of this sponsored dev notes workflow that I personally use. The other one, not so much because I'm not I'm not hiring anybody and taking a bunch of applicants through Typeform or otherwise. But this one, I am taking something through Typeform. And that is inquiries for sponsorships for the DevNotes newsletter. There's an advertise right up here. And then you can reserve your spot now. And sponsors will give me the information that is applicable for them to potentially sponsor the newsletter. And this make.com scenario is hooked up to that form and it watches for responses. Now that's hooked up to an email that I don't really check. And I don't want to forward those emails to my main email. So what I do is since I, like I said, really use Notion for everything, it'll take all of that data and send it over into a Notion table. So it'll create a database item, but within a table, and it'll create a row for each individual inquiry, each potential sponsor, containing all of that information within each column. I mean, you know how tables work, but I'm not gonna show you the actual data because it's kind of sensitive, I suppose. But, but that translates over into our interview workflow, where as you can see, the first two items are the same. Typeform or whatever software or app you use to get applicants in their information and then that'll create a row in notion just like before however it'll also create a select in notion which that can be the status of the applicant and you can see that better over here for router so if you are in notion kind of like this whereas this is a video that i may make soon i'm not 100 percent sure but right now it's in the idea phase i can go in the writing and the filming phase but this is what i'm talking about you can come in here and set it to rejected or passed or put into the interview process and what will occur over here is that if you set it rejected in notion it'll then route over to this gmail right here as you can see rejected and send that thank you for applying um but we've decided to go with another applicant that was more qualified for the position don't you love those emails or if you wanted to put that applicant through to an interview you could just, again, change it right in Notion. You're not coming into this workflow. You change it right in Notion, and it'll create a Google Meet. And then you can take that Google Meet link and create a Gmail with your message that says, congratulations, you've moved on to the interview phase. Here's the meeting at this time. Please let us know if you can make it or whatever. Now, this one is wild. This is a... Well, automate posting from blog to social media with ChatGPT. Instead, I haven't tried this one out yet, but I've been thinking about it. I've been seeing kind of how it would go. And that would be for the newsletter, which is run through Beehive. That's like the platform that I use. So for every single post sent, so every newsletter that's sent, it would trigger this workflow right here. It would take that newsletter, put it into ChatGPT, parse the text and then route it to various other social medias like X to create a post or Facebook pages to create a post or now this is a crazier one. It goes back into chat GPT. It also creates a completion. So prompt completion. And then you get the file an image file using that prompt, which then creates an organization image post over on LinkedIn. Don't know how that one would work too well, but it's a possibility with this workflow right here. Because this is one of those things that I just don't, I just wouldn't do. 
<laughs> because like I like making the newsletter and then I like making YouTube videos, but everything else, I don't care to post on X. I don't care to post on Instagram. I don't even have a Facebook LinkedIn. I don't care to post on there either, but in theory I should because it's good for business for the newsletter and for the YouTube channel, but I don't. So <laughs> setting up a workflow like this, starting off with the newsletter, seeing how it goes, and then start, maybe I can figure out a way to go about it with like maybe my YouTube script or something like that and seeing how that goes, this would be the workflow for that. So if you, if you don't have an online presence that's perfectly understandable, obviously, <laughs> I kind of wish I was anonymous on this too, but you know, that's neither here nor there. This could also be beneficial if you don't have a personal brand. So for, if you're a developer who is like contributing to open source, maintaining open source projects, and you need to keep your community informed about updates, releases, important discussions. Sorry, I'm looking at other stuff on my screen. Well, you can do that by just like having a blog post. So if you're writing a blog post about your software or about new releases or what have you, you just make the single blog post and then it activates the workflow and it'll post either, maybe you can post a link to the blog post with an image or you'll post the text from the blog post to X or what have you, instead of you manually going to X and posting it there, you manually going to LinkedIn and posting it there, you manually go into Facebook, you get the idea. So it just automates that entire thing. So you just have to do one thing, but it, it posts to all the applicable social medias to where you either have a following or can grow a following to have more users and contributors to your project. Now, this is the final one that I have made right here, and that is save clockify time in sheets. If you've watched any of my older A Day in the Life of Software Engineer videos, you know that I used Toggle to track my time worked. And right now, you actually cannot see that. Right here, it is Clockify. I use Clockify now, free version, whatever, if I ever need to time a project to bill a client. And that's what it's for. Not for the employer to see, oh, make sure they're working, although I guarantee there are plenty of employers or bosses that do that. But it's in order to accurately um, bill your client for the hours worked on a project, even though if you're like you know me, I would recommend bidding per project as opposed to per hour because that just hinders your efficiency. And what, what, what do we talk about at the beginning of this video? Being efficient is better and automating things is better. So the quicker you get it done, the less you get paid. That doesn't make any sense. Anyway, a lot of projects are billed by hour, especially if they're ongoing projects or if they're contracts with big corporations or military contracts and things of that nature. So those are billed by hour. So if you use Clockify or Toggle, so if I were to come over here, I think they have toggle on here. So they have toggle track right here. What you're able to do is for every single time entry or every single time report on toggle, it will automatically upload that in a Google sheet as a row. And all of that information, including your, your, the client, the project, the hours worked, all of it will be saved in Google sheets. And that can be for your entire development team. Everybody has this. Every time there's a time entry, it gets saved over there. So now you have all of this centralized and you can also use the free version and still use the workflow in order to get over there instead of having to pay for it in order to get the reports. You have everything centralized right there for you that you can then use to invoice them or you could set up like a uh, QuickBooks. You can set up QuickBooks right here and then you can create an invoice and you can attach it right here. Let's uh, even that out. And it can create an invoice based on the data that is in that Google Sheets for the specific client. You'd have to set that up a little bit, obviously, because there's a little bit more information there, but <laughs> imagine not having to do any of the aggregation, any of the addition, and any of the creating of the invoice for the hours worked on a development project. Pretty cool workflow, if you ask me. Anyway, that's it. Thank you for watching this video. I know this wasn't the same exact um, style as last video, but this is more, a little bit different type. I will be making more things like last video, more hardware things as well, like I have previously, and those will contain at least elements of the new style considering people seem to really like it. But uh, anyway, that's it for now. Hope you liked it. See you in the next one.